Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Miami Heat Beat postgame show. I'm your host, Ron Carlo Navas. After a huge Heat win with me today, we got the intern, Pablo. What's up, guys? How we doing? What a, what a win. What a win. What a win. We, we got Frankie G. We have enough. We have enough. We actually have more bodies available on this postgame show than the Heat did tonight. That's that's a true statement. Uh, we got Saucy takes coach Lou. man i think spolster has wet dreams about games like this <laughs> <laughs> he loves this shit so much sicko. i love it he pure sicko this shit so much and finally the great siobhan what's up on good evening i think spo and i must be connected in our dream space because maybe <laughs> <some> <laughs> Spo's just the Chris Quinn of Eric Spo's dreams. Man. Right here. This shit is so fun. <laughs> Miami, uh, as of tonight, is in sole possession of the final of the six seed, meaning they are out of the play in. Uh, that's a win for tonight after they lost seven straight games. It looked like they were in the depth, staring down the barrel of what was going to be a very uncomfortable second half of the season with a lot of questions. And they've answered a lot of that. And I know that celebrating being in six is not <laughs> very Miami Heat, but they are two and a half games back from four and two games back from five. And really, I think if you can get to five or four, that is just the win of, of a lifetime. If you're Miami, the but third easiest remaining strength of schedule. Listen, yeah, but that means nothing for us. It's the, at the end of the day. Yes, Papa. The Knicks barely hold on to the against the Detroit Pistons, needing the most egregious no call I've ever seen in my life. And that was ridiculous. Oh my god, that, that was, was crazy. so stupid, bro. And we're here. We're we're on a road trip. The Heat get a great win tonight. Uh, Lou, you were talking about how much you loved this. They go into Sacramento, a team that had won six out of their last ten. They were on a winning streak. They had won three games in a row. You see what that offense can do. They're down really every competent ball handler they have and their best player, and they go in and they get a win. They hold on. Best yeah. player, Duncan Robinson played tonight. Yeah, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, for real, we had bro. the best ball handler out there today. Ten assists, baby. Point, point Eleven dunky. assists. Point point Eleven, dunky. my bad. Eleven. Point Dunkus over Point Justice. You heard it here first. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 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 Take him out, Brass. <laughs> Take him out, Brass. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but seriously, like, we're over here. Like, this is crazy, guys. Like, three years ago, if Duncan Robinson went one for last season, if Duncan Robinson went one for eleven, everybody's on his ass. Today, when one for eleven, everybody's like, What is he coming back in? We need somebody <laughs> to stop this zone press. And Spo was like, It's time. Came back in plus 25 today. He is no longer the Duncan of old. If he's not scoring, he's not snoring anymore. He affects the game in so many ways. I'm so fucking happy for this team, man. Uh, dangerously looming, man, for sure. <laughs> dangerously looming. Wee woo. We woo, we woo, we woo. <laughs> they, you know, uh, let's, let's stick with Duncan uh, for a second, Frankie, because a guy like him, exactly like what Lou said, if he wasn't contributing scoring, there wasn't a lot that he could do. And I know we talked a lot about in years past the way he moves without the ball, the way he screens, the way he does all the little Duncan things. But there was a tangible, there was a there was a quantifiable difference when he was on the court. And to him to become a guy that Spo is like, hey, we need an answer to a press. And it's you, Bucko. And for him to deliver, and, and again, it didn't look pretty. It, he he did enough. He's not a primary ball handler. He's not. You know, he had the 11 assists because he's such a good passer off the pick and roll. But, like, you know, he's not a point guard. And for him to be put in a situation like that, getting that kind of defense and and them coming out the other side, I think is remarkable, Frank. Oh, man. He was just so patient and under control. Uh, The reason he was so good about 
uh, versus the zone and, and versus the press. He was very comfortable just taking his time, catching it, looking up, looking ahead, finding the soft spots, directing traffic, just being patient, being a veteran. I, I think we, you know, Duncan's only been around for like four or five years. We forget that guy's 29 years old. I guess seen a lot of shit. Um, he's, he was magnificent today. Just his awareness overall, his leadership. Uh, he picked up a delay of game warning that was not, it's not going to show up on the box score, but he was arguing with the ref because the ref disrespected him and he's, he was holding the ball. He's like, I'm not giving this shit up. And he dropped it, uh, rolled it ahead of him. And I'm like, where has this motherfucker been <laughs> ever since Jalen Brown tried to rip his arm off? He's been a different guy. Uh, this whole season he's been different. Um, I just love his attitude, his, uh, his tenacity. He's playing with confidence and, and um, he's, he's sure of himself. And that's something, you know, we talk about all the, the skill development, but I think that's the personality de development that was really missing in, in Duncan's game, that uh, belief and, and self-confidence that uh, was going, uh, uh, away at times, you know, when he felt that uh, imposter syndrome in in like the finals, for example. I mean, Bond, I, I don't I don't know what else there is to say. Um, you know, again, eleven assists, <laughs> hard to hard to only two turnovers considering what happened at the end of that game. Uh, hard, hard to argue, hard to argue with those results. Plus twenty five team leader. Don't think that's a coincidence. No, not at all. And like you, like both Frankie and Lou said, you know. Who would have thought that on a game, you know, where he shot so so poorly, just everything else that he just everything else that he does just overshadows. And like you said, like, I don't give a damn about the shooting right now. I need you to come and do these other things that you have been doing. Frankie talked about his patience and and with the patience, his like his his uh, steadfastness on his drives, like he's using his body much better. He's he's leveraging his own strength. He, he has the the kind of off ball chicken wing, you know, in good possession or in good possession that's getting him, you know, kind of a, a good leverage on his drives. And he's just making good decision. He's he feels like he's become like more athletic a bit or like at least more acrobatic in kind of how he's um, maneuvering and handling his body around the rim. And I think that's that's really kind of surprising. I don't know that you see guys um, guys like him kind of actively. Um, pick up athleticism you pick up agility you know you can pick up like some quickness but kind of like a, a there's a different kind of fluidity fluidity in in his in his body that I think is is, is just really fun and helping aid you know everything else that's, that's coming along I'm I'm super happy for him and just you know kind of like Frankie said to be out of that place mentally where you know your, your shot's not falling in it's like shit. I have to press to make up in other areas, and now I'm getting fouls, and now you know I'm, I'm off balance, trying to prove that I I should still be on the floor. But he's playing free of that, and you know I I think it's been you know for the better of him, and and you know clearly for the better of the team. Pablo, they they avoided um, a collapse unlike with unlike one I have not seen in a long time. And that's saying something. And that's saying something because they're the kings of of that of whatever they're the Michael Jordans of whatever that of whatever that was, you know they're the they're the goats of that, and for them to pull it together, Bam might have had like six turnovers by himself. It, it was just he, it was a disaster. Bam hands. He couldn't uh, handle the, the double teams at all. Pablo, before we get into that, I I just think that their resilience from that to close out the game, whatever it was, a nine to two run or, or whatever that was to shut the door. That, that shows me something without Jimmy. That shows me something when yep. they were frazzled. And I think that that matters more than them being up 20. Yep. It, they held composure and they just, so two months ago, they regained composure. I would yeah. Say. They they two months ago that that's it like the moment they blew that lead it was game over they were gonna lose that game but they fought back and at the end of the day basketball is a game of runs the Kings had their run and then the Heat with withstood that run and went on their own run and instead of giving up and just be like oh whatever it's it, it's it's a two point game they just they fought back and and they showed that we we can win this game still and the resiliency it it, it was beautiful to watch how. As to somehow they blew, they blew a twenty point lead, but they still won by more than six points. It it was nice to watch. 
I mean, plus 25 Duncan, he comes in the game, really turned it around. Guys, let's talk about let's talk about what went right in that game before we talk about what went wrong because I do have some thoughts on particularly Bam, but let's talk about what went right, Lou, because their shooting tonight was incredible. I, I thought what Caleb gave them, you know, in yep. particular, and off the bounce, and I, I think I tweeted that he has the quickest acceleration on the team, mm -hmm. uh, which is not saying a lot. But certainly it jumped out the page tonight. He looked springy. He looked healthy. But I, I just thought that they're shooting tonight. When they shoot like that, they can beat anybody. Yeah, and like you said, much of it really had to do in that first quarter with uh, Caleb seeing the ball go through the net. I believe he made his first three, and he made about two threes that first quarter. And then it carried over to, you know, Highsmith, um, yep. the second half of that first quarter. And, uh, you know, like you stated – with Caleb regaining his athleticism back, Highsmith has also regained some of his um, just ability to shoot. Like, you know, he's a streaky shooter. And it when it's crazy, people notice when people do things right when the ball goes in the basket sometimes. You know, that's all it takes. When, when Highsmith starts hitting shots, everybody's like, damn, he's just that much better of a defender. Like, you know, he was, <laughs> he was doing things to that team defensively that – should be studied. He he needs to be studied defensively because it was um, his intensity, his ability to put the you know digs. Because the heat the Heat's defense was literally turnover or basket for that entire first quarter, and their offense was just feeding off of these turnovers, feeding off of this energy, and they were just playing so free. I guess is the way that I'll put it. It's particularly, I want to say through the first three quarters of the game, they were playing really really free. But in that first quarter. Uh, I believe they had like 18 assists in the first half. Like it just felt like they were on a different tier and every, the ball was moving. There was juice behind the ball. Um, free flowing. Was... Very free flowing. And they didn't really stick to, it was a lot of mismatch hunting this game. It, it was just a beautiful game, man. I, I don't know. It, it's what you want to see. It's like, if this offense can remain like this when everybody's back, I don't know if it can, but if it can, that offense is good enough. Like they look good against New Orleans. I mean, they were they were yeah. they mm -hmm. were clubbing them, and they were all there. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's just a matter of consistency with the team. Yeah, the shots fell today, particularly in the first half. In the second half, it was a little rougher, but still, it was just the process of it all. It just got a lot quicker. Um, one of the guys who I think helped with that, particularly, I don't I don't know how we've gone fifteen minutes. We haven't mentioned the guy's first game, Delon Wright, guys. Delon yes. Wright. Uh, the most unsexiest stat line, I think he finished. I think, did, did he finish with 10 points? Oh, more. He had like 12, 13 yeah, th points. 13, 3, 5, 2 steals, 1 block. The most important number? Zero turnovers. Zero turnovers. <clears throat> but his ability, a lot of, you know, and, and rightfully so, when Bam started getting doubles sometimes later on in the game, things clogged up. I think his ability to move off the ball and provide almost... All right, so we've seen this too many times. When Bam gets doubled, ball swings. By the time he gets to the corner, Josh Richardson is just standing there. We wasted five passes, six seconds, and we have nowhere to go. Uh, he did it twice today where he, before the ball came to the corner, as the guy, the help was rotating to a particular spot, he curled and cut. On one of them, he found Highsmith in the right corner, and on the other one, he zipped it back to Hawkins in the left corner. Shit like that completely makes the difference on how you view or how people view in general when we get doubled, how we handle it. Because sometimes it's not on the player getting doubled. It's on the team around that player to find the correct, just read and react to the space. And I thought they did a good job of that, particularly that first half. Shout out to Just Jared for subscribing with Prime. 20 months of Let's Go Heat. Love that. Let's just commissioner gifted a tier one sub as well. Uh, appreciate the love and support. Uh, I mean, Bond, you you sent us in the group chat to piggyback off of what Lou said. You were like, "Hey, Josh, thank you for your service." But girl, like, it's been a blast. <laughs> <laughs> it's been real, Jay Rich. Goodbye, brother. And and I don't even want to, you know, like the stretch of games leading up to Josh's um, injury. He'd been playing better. He'd he yeah, played well. He'd been playing well. Yeah, he'd found a groove. He'd been playing in what you. Um, uh, kind of, you know, idealize as a role for Josh Richardson. 
he was doing the slashing things. He was doing the the secondary penetration types of things, and he was, uh, you know, shooting better. Um, I I really like what Delon gave you today, and one in his frame, and he just feels that much more comfortable with the ball. I I don't get kind of the crackhead, um, you know, antsy type of energy off of him. He <laughs> that's kind of like all I can by that. I can just, <laughs> right. It's just like it's just there's a there's an angst. There's kind of a, a a chaos that feels to radiate off of off of certain guys in like high key pick and roll type of handling situations. And I don't get that from Delon, but he has like the wiry type of frame that you would almost kind of expect to maybe be present there, but it isn't for me. And I thought that that was really, uh, you know, that that was really cool to see. He's six, five um, makes, you know, really, really good decisions with the ball, but doesn't try to do too much. Like the, uh, the great decision doesn't have to be, you know, the most complicated one. It doesn't have to be, you know, these, these wild skip passes to the point of the the shooting and kind of just the offense in general and where it does stagnate the the fact that Haywood, Jaime, Caleb, Delon to an extent, Nico as a pick and pop threat more so above the break but the fact that you have at least four guys who you can put in either corner and kind of right at the the break point and you have a, a Nicola and a Kevin Love who can kind of be your above the break guys it makes the the pick and roll, the high pick and roll, whether it's Tyler and Bam or Duncan and Bam, that much more, you know, it gives it that much more space. You're either splitting two with one because you have to bring your low man to tag Bam on the strong side, or you're not. And then we just have guys who are who are spraying it. And he, he listen, there is some crackheads in the league, Skinny McGee. <laughs> um, but yeah, like the 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 coming on of everyone else's, um, you know, shooting prowess just helps simplify things. I, I, I like that Miami has, you know, the the versatility that we do East West that we can run all of the, the the fades and all of the stags and all of the kind of you know really fun schemes to get you know from side to side on the court, but to have it be able to space and you just have a simple you know high ball screen roll, what are you going to do type of thing, and it for that to be potent in that way, I think, you know, serves them well to be able to pick apart defenses and, you know, kind of multiple ways doing it. And, you know, I don't know. I think it's just, it's just gelling. It's coming together really nicely. I love the Kevin Love band minutes. I love letting Kevin Love post and be where he wants to. We'll also stretch, let Bam do his things. Like it's just all of the kind of pieces and components, um, you know, just just continue to, to coalesce for the group. Why has Chap made Jay Rich Tyrone Biggums? If this was hangover time, Brass would have <laughs> Brass would have the Brass would have the, the edited GIF ready to go and everything. Frankie. Yeah. <laughs> um as as we move on from the Heat looking to have hopefully solved their backup point guard problems, although I will tell people it's only been a game. You know, let's let's be a little right. let's have a little grace with him and and with the team. You know, it's only been one game against a bad defense or an okay defense, I should say. So, you know, let's let's give it some time as we kind of see them get all their bodies back but for sure it feels like a comfortable stop gap at least for now and hopefully kind of something more going forward um frankie let's talk a little bit about their defense tonight because their zone was interesting um and then i want to get into kevin love but you know the zone has been obviously a weapon for spo and i think it was lou that said he expects to see a lot of it tonight to preserve bam's energy um going into the back-to-back frankie what'd you make of of their defense tonight and particularly kind of their zone Ah, the zone defense. When you have weapons like Haywood Highsmith and the lawn right and Caleb Martin uh, on the perimeter, it makes everyone's job a lot easier. Look at their, uh, uh, De'Aaron Fox's night. He had seven turnovers. You barely heard his name for the first three quarters of the game because he couldn't get by. He couldn't get dribble penetration. He couldn't create anything. And they were really good about, you know, swinging the arm around, getting a little deflection, poking the ball away and creating an offense. Uh, Highsmith was everywhere defensively, just deflecting, harassing, uh, stunting, just uh, preventing anything from get, being easy and simple, get, uh, messing up their timing. Uh, DeLon, just phenomenal body control, using his hands, poking the ball away, reading the passing lanes, deflections. 
Uh, Caleb was very active. Jaime underrated in the zone too, helping mm-hmm. on uh, inside on his rotations from the weak yeah. side, making great reads there. Uh, Bam, of course, had some great uh, help. Kevin's been really solid all season. Uh, most of the season, he, he had a little slump there coming off the injuries and stuff, but he's he's been better lately, had a phenomenal game. Uh, defensively, they just never let them get comfortable in anything. They, they were uh, preventing dribble penetration all night, uh, um, just being a pest, a nuisance to the, to the, the team. Sabonis so couldn't really get anything going. Uh, he got a couple offensive rebounds, a couple easy, you know, easy broken plays where he took advantage of. But he had mostly overall quiet night. Um, Murray killed them, but they did a great mm-hmm. job on Fox right and on Herder. Uh, uh, I love Delon Wright uh, chasing Herder on the screens. Um, he did such he does such a good job getting skinny. It's almost a relief to have have that option, a guard who can get skinny around screens consistently and play help side without giving up size. Um, it was nice. Caleb did a great job on Fox. So I want to give him credit on, on the ball uh, point of attack. I was surprised they went with Caleb there, but they gave him the size, uh, the, the more size and more, more athleticism, uh, and really bothered Fox. They look, listen, they were active and they competed today in a way that I was blown away going into the fourth mm-hmm. quarter and, and particularly on defense uh, on offense, you know, they have their streaky nights, but you know what they were, they have had so many issues containing guys like Fox, you know, off the dribble tonight was something kind of unusual for them but hopefully will trend uh that way going forward i have celtic fans that are friends of mine texting me that they are so happy miami is out of the plan because they don't have to they, they hope to not <laughs> see them because they're all traumatized God. all those all those people have the fakest bravado on twitter because in reality <laughs> they're all like that they're all fucking scared of delon Wright. <laughs> they're all scared of jaime and they're all scared that Cole Swider is going to figure it out against them. Because, <laughs> yeah, yikes. That young man is a little rushed. <laughs> that, he, go back in the lab, kid. You'll, you'll bro, come out. You'll come out a soldier. Played, he played two minutes, bro. That's what I'm like, saying. And he did. missed two shots. And the second one, like, too rolled many. out. Y'all I haven't, I haven't seen that man make a shot. In the that's that's some Brian type. Right there. Just Aaron says, no one's afraid of Swider. I remember that preseason game when he balled out. Every Celtic fan was like, it, it, this ends with him in game seven going six for nine. Y'all are yeah. gonna be keeping your words next season. We all know we are, no, I, I think he'll be good. I just think he'll be young. <laughs> um, there you go. All right, we're gonna do uh Kevin Love and then Hawkes. Um Pablo, we could we could talk about love. I, I thought you know Lou had mentioned Lou really really provided the show sheet today. Um oh, apologize. talked about the mismatches, the mismatch hunting. Kevin Love, I thought getting in the post was really good. Bond, we'll go to you after. We could talk about the two big lineups because I know that you want to get into that. But I, I thought Love kind of attacking their switches. Herder would get on him a bunch, and, and Love was kind of torturing him. Had had a really, really nice game. Very vintage Minnesota performance in, in terms of kind of where he got his shots. Um, obviously indispensable to have a guy like him. He was able to pick out which person he wanted to take into the post, and he was just – he was driving in like it – like it was 2011, not even like not catching bodies in a way where he's dunking, but he was he was creating contact and going to the line like if he was 25, and that was a huge and that was like a big part why we we, we went big in the third quarter. He would he was abs- those threes he hit. I, don't, I think it was second quarter when Sabonis was guarding him. Those threes were some crazy ass threes because he was pump faking. Sabonis wouldn't jump and he would still shoot. And he'll make them. Hit him off the bench has been quite possibly like our, I think probably our best player off the bench when Duncan starts, because I still think Duncan's better off the bench when Hero is starting. But for sure, Kevin Love is a, a top five most important player on our team right now, and and it's crazy to say that because he's like thirty seven, <laughs> and but he's just been you take him away from this team and. I don't know how I feel about our bench unit without Kevin Love. <laughs> Please agree. don't. Please don't take him away. He get, and he does it in 15 minutes. Like, anytime yeah. he gets exactly 15 <laughs> minutes, yeah. he's fucking going to fucking work. 19.7 rebounds in 15 minutes. That's crazy. That is old man efficiency. That is some get in, get out. <laughs> I'm talking the fuck in. I don't want to talk. Don't talk I'm to icing me the, the knees. Six minutes left the game. He would have had 22. 
If you didn't we're not work those. friends. We are co-workers. Okay, I'm in here and I'm home. That man, that man does not go by the coffee machine to to chat Hell no. for the little cola. I bring my lunch. I sit at my desk. I eat my cheese sandwich and I'm out. Doesn't take lunch. Work eats through lunch. <laughs> yeah. Just sits. Just yeah. Just eats. Works. Does all that. He's like, I'm not working overtime. Don't even ask me. He was babying them in the post. It no, was so I don't crazy. want any extra hours. I'm fine. <laughs> you, no, I will not crazy. be going to the company picnic. <laughs> Kevin Love sounds like me at the arena. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would not be working no more. You know what's so funny? Apparently, Kevin Love does like to hang out with the guys, which is just really funny. No, it, no off the court, yes. But in the game, does. he's no, all, yeah, all business. All business. Which it's, is good. That man's a million it's... years old. Preserved. <laughs> bro, it... but he's trucking them, bro. He was trucking them. Like, there's three straight plays where he was just going to the post and the defender was on the floor, free throw line. Dude, that shit gotta... was crazy to watch. I just, I want li- I want minimal minutes. They got to pickle him. They got to put him in some, <laughs> some vinegar and some spices. Just preserve his ass. <laughs> <Yes>. Self, self-stable. <laughs> <laughs> Give that out or out. Bond, two big lineups. Um, they've been successful. I'll pull up the lineup data now, but it, it just feels like they have figured out a lot of the high low stuff. I think, especially with Highsmith, when he cuts from the weak side, I think that that's been like really kind of helpful for them in those lineups in particular. And they just have a lot of movement. And obviously, with Kevin, I mean, it, it helps that Kevin's shooting the ball well again because he did struggle for a while, which I think kind of makes those difficult. But I mean, they look they look good together. Uh, they're plus four on the year net rating, one ten offensive rating, one hundred six defensive rating. So pretty good. But how how you feeling about it? Way it's trending. Yeah, I just I like the so. I understand you putting Haywood in the conversation, and I get it. But I won't. But he he can serve for them in that way. But between like Bam Nicola and and Kevin, especially Bam and Kevin, because. Kevin will shoot from a distance that Bam will not. And Bam, if you're going to take a damn three, shoot it like you meant to. <laughs> Don't just like, like yes. that release felt like that shit like slipped out of his hands. Shoot the ball. It's fine. He didn't want to do it. Oh. He, he did not want to shoot do that. It. Don't do it. <laughs> like, don't tease me that way. Um, <laughs> it was like he yeah. was bullied to do it. It was like, oh, come on, shoot the three. You know, you're 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 yeah. like at a charity event. Shoot Very it, peer pressured. No, then just don't. Um, but Kevin will, and Kevin is, and and I, I before I talk about Kevin posting, I would be remiss. To, Bam showed me things in the post that I've been really happy to see from him. Typically, he's on the right block. He's probably not going baseline. He's going to give you that half spin just to rock himself into rhythm to get into that shot. He went to the baseline aggressively. He still got to a shot where he wanted to. And I think he understands he's athletic enough to get to the baseline. And and Caleb does it a lot, too, like finishing at the rim, but like with his head kind of beneath the basket or on on the other side of the basket. Um, And that's a that's a. Angle that's small, but it's open if you can get to it. And like I said, Caleb gets to it a lot. But the the versatility that Kevin Love allows you to play with, he is a great post, like post present. He seals beautifully. It's why he's such a great um rebounder. Also, he leverages his off ball, his off arm so well in rebounding possessions. He's ha- he has you stuck here and he's going to tap it to himself, bring it down. Sealing, same thing. He he uses his angles really well. And so now you have a post presence who, you know, at some point commands, you know, at least a body and a half. Bam is able to kind of be in the areas where he likes to be. And they 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 did on one of the possessions today, Kevin started in the corner. We're a great baseline cutting team, whether it's the guards kind of, you know, hanging around the short corner and flashing across the lane and finishing under the rim. Or it's, you know, Kevin did it today. Started in the corner, inched his way in. Bam was kind of out on the, like, left-ish elbow area. And then Kevin just flashes, gets a good seal. Um, and I don't know, it just it allows you to, to – str- you have your you have your defense in its shell or whatever, but even within the shell, having a presence in the post that's going to command attention allows you to kind of stretch it even further in like a, a shorter part of the shell. It's just I don't know. It's just it's really fun and it it just warms my heart a lot because you know the NBA kind of is what it is today. But it, it's it's really it's really like I, I really love seeing a guy with like a solid um a, a solid post game and it doesn't have to be something you know alpha in the chat was like you know we've seen it work against teams like milwaukee 
But against Boston, you know, it, it probably doesn't. And that's fine. It's not something that you need to necessarily go to every day. It doesn't have to be like your baseline grouping, but to know that you have it, to know that you can go to it. And now you have a package of things that you feel comfortable with, whether it's Bam and Kevin, Nicola and Bam. Bam will then kind of take the posting position for that. Nicola's a pick and pop threat, elevated sideline, can get it into him. To know that you have the ability to go to these things and are comfortable with them now, you know, it just gives you that much more to work with. I agree. Um, I, I think just having options is always yes. good. It's, it's always, always good to have tools. I do want to say about Bam's post game, I was not a huge fan of it. At a lot of times, particularly when he got doubled, I think that yes. he, tries to, he tries to split it a lot. And I think he's too good a passer to let mm -hmm. them get away with that cheeky late help. Because that guy, that second guy comes, they're sitting on the spin move. And the second yes. he spins, that guy comes. And I'm like, you're too good. You're too good to not know that's coming. Especially when it's happened three fucking times in a row. Yeah. And you're too good a passer to not be able to, like, figure it out. Even if your guys aren't moving great. And yeah. I kind of think that collapse is mostly on him. Uh, and I, I, I mean, I think that got out of hand. He wasn't in at the start. Let's hold on. He, he wasn't yeah. in the game when it started collapsing. I think a lot of it, I, I mean, I, I think a lot of the worst turnovers were him. Okay. Uh, you, do you disagree? Man, I could be wrong. I him. Look, he I, was near a lot of the worst of them. They yeah, weren't fucking five ball. tonight. And I bet four yeah. of them came in the fourth consecutively. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't as good as we would like him to be because it was this. I, I honestly he was don't. Need... Plus eleven, it's great because he, he was great. Oh, no, he was great. Was he was great. Bro, he, he, was, watched, he, he had twenty-eight, ten, and, and seven. I'm sorry. Evaporated before our eyes. Bro, and watched, who helped like, build that twenty-point lead? But, but, I'm sorry. You watched he the true. last five Duncan. minute, that five <laughs> minutes of it the in the fourth quarter. Everybody wants to shot. Because you're trying to jump. <laughs> we'll be more successful it. than them dudes trying you know, to jump. Well Look, I don't even think it's crazy. Bam with the double. That's, I mean, I do think that's an issue, but I think today, particularly, the issue was just him catching the fucking ball. Yeah. Like, it wasn't even like the double sometimes. Like, he yeah. lost like twice to the double. He bobbled every single <laughs> entry pass for that and three minutes stint in the fourth quarter. When he loses it in the double, Sometimes it is super frustrating because like he's not it's not he's not being doubled with his back completely toward where the defense is. He's being doubled in at least like a, a, a half side, like like his yeah. back is to the baseline. You can see that it's coming. I don't understand That's why, it why it's not. Yeah. And he lets Take it come. A, give me one retreat dribble and like create a little bit of space for yourself. But like, I can't have you watching it come. And then like, I actively see you going like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. And then it kind of just like falls out your hands. But man was fantastic. Too. The, the most annoying so ones for me. me. No, but then the most annoying ones for me were when he's in the middle of the zone at the high post at the uh, at the free throw line, and they're tr they're throwing the ball into him. And he's trying to catch it one hand, but he's not trying to catch it and like bring it in. He's trying to tip it to himself, and that's where somebody gets a hand on it, and he and they lose it. And Fox Fox got like two steals off of that alone. Yeah, that's where that's super annoying. But besides, I mean, the turnover is awful in the in the fourth quarter. But besides that. He was phenomenal. No, he was fantastic. And, and on early defense. on, getting getting Jaime involved on in the cuts, got mm -hmm. Jaime like three, four layups right there. Beautiful. Jaime yeah. with great cuts and seals, reverse. reverse doesn't matter. Uh, both of them did a phenomenal job getting the team going. Uh, and they and defensively, I mean, Sabonis it, it had nothing on on Bam. Like all of Sabonis yeah. traveled like four separate times. Can we? Like, yes. Sabonis, yeah. Bam every feels time. so much stronger. Like then not not he Bam doesn't get moved often, but like. Sabonis tried to like lay the wood four separate times and just like travel. <laughs> His play style is just like he travels so much. Like it, it's it's so weird. Like they called it. I think they called it once. Yeah. The very first time. After that, it just let it happen. And like yeah. he tries to bump bodies, and when he can't move someone, he takes he takes little little hops. But yes. Bam See, just locked that shit up with? today. No, nah, Bam was clamping that shit up today. Yeah. Like realistically, he had a lot on his plate today. And he fucking responded like, no, nope. yeah, he had he had three turnovers in the fourth. <laughs> no, he hates yeah, them. Yeah, he was like, awful. Yeah, like, no. He was Kyle Lowry. It wasn't. It wasn't whoa, perfect. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, it it wasn't perfect. Game by Bam today, boys. But, like, 
he got to his spots. The first yeah. quarter, he set the tone as well. Like yes. the team did a great job passing him the ball on like the two lobs, Caleb one and, and Duncan the other. But just in general, can we for just for a, a smidge second? This doesn't have to do entirely with Bam. This is just the offense as a whole. This was the best. Um, I want to say like entry pass game we've ever fucking oh. had this year. I didn't see yeah. a single turnover on an entry pass today, and we had about seventeen of them because Bam was getting <laughs> entry passes, K Love was getting entry passes, Hawkins was getting entry passes. Yep. I was yeah, like, we just turned into uh, two thousand and five Shaq in the post, just fucking <laughs> feed him. It was it was great. I I'm baffled because we <laughs> typically we struggle with entry passes, but today the league in general. Hold on. Yeah, I the, just, the league in general. Kyle not being on the team kind of helps that, though. I'm I'm kidding. It was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really kidding. not though. You're not kidding. I want to give, <laughs> not, I though, wanna, I wanna give Chad a little context. I I feel like dog right now. I I don't feel well. <laughs> and Lou and I said I go guys. I don't know how I'm getting through the show tonight because I feel like ass. And Lou is trying to fucking kick me <laughs> when, I have, when I got no fight left. G saw that uh, Kyle got down. stitches and he's he's out of it completely. <laughs> Did you see that he yeah. got the little number seven? Yeah, he's yes, Harry Potter yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's, he's a chosen one. Yeah, the, but what helps like more solid post entry? This felt like one of the we felt like we had real post presences. I, I was very happy in seeing Bam like legitimately keep guys on his back. And it's, he's not going to, Bam's not going to win like a posting battle against, you know, too many people bigger than him. Maybe not too many people his size, even though he should. But when he gets these cross matches, he had like Malik Monk on him. He had uh, like Barnes. Harrison Barnes on him a few times, but like really, really was, you know, being adamant and holding his frame getting his numbers open, like it helps your post-entry passing when you have a more firm target to, mm. to get it to. You always mention that, Bond, that he doesn't he doesn't consistently he put his butt down, it. get it seals, man, call he for the ball. <laughs> but he did, he did a, I thought he, it, it, when he did great in the post, was doing minimal things. He's not, he's facing up one quick move and go. And he, yeah. he hit that hook shot that you've been asking him to hit all season. Oh, he, hit, he hit like four of them today. Yes. Uh, it was doing a great job. I'm so pleased with him today. He did so many of the things. Oh, three turnovers. He was awful. Yeah, he was shit. Leave me alone, man. I Game ceiling block. He was I just, awful. I just, his got, two I just got mad. You shouldn't have let him get to the rim. What's his yeah. problem? Just split the fucking doubles. Like, and, I, and then there was like two times that he got. You know, the double that like, you're, you were most upset about that you tweeted that, he got free throws. He got free throws. He got free throws. <laughs> <laughs> He got free throws. There were two that he did that. And that was one in like the you just first wanted quarter. to hate. You just wanted to hate. And he got free throws because I just think that's bad habit, bro. It was, was like it was awful because it was an offensive rebound and they they were taking their time, set bam in the post, threw it in there with five seconds to go, and nobody moved. Everybody was sitting there in the zone. <laughs> <soul>. <laughs> his his only outlet was like at the top of the key, passing making a jump pass over two bodies and, and yeah. the help guy to, to the top of the key, whoever was there. I was like. He got free throws, G. What are we doing? <laughs> I know, man. I don't know. I, just, I want perfection. I was just mad. I mean, they, them them blowing the lead was annoying, and then it it, it just kind of fed into just like I don't know. I, you're the best. But then player, between right? he and Hawkins, were the re, mm. like brought him back. Like Hawkins had his no, three trips, like three trips. Um, oh. God, that the first he did, I made it something in the post first. He and abused then the bonus. He. The the most beautiful step through on Throws the baseline. His ass. Oh my god! Like that was, and then bam, came and, and hit like a, a really solid shot in like the left kind of short wing. That was like really timely. It felt like a good one. Mm -hmm. um, it it feels like a I don't know like bam's all of bam's game feels to be kind of firming up, like just kind of calcifying and, and just really really solidifying in like a really great, really mature type of way. Yeah. We need like a bonds to source section. What was that? Calcifying? Calcifying, yes. God, that's a fucking that's a word, bro. That's, that's a, a fucking SAT. That's a word of all time. Word, that is one of the words. Of that's all my time. goat. That's, that's my fucking goat. We need yeah, we need bonds to source so we can all learn. I have a I have a little representation of Kevin Love today. How he was 
<laughs> bro, this shit had me rolling. I saw this, this on Twitter. Saw, yeah. Uh, uh, Gad, Gad had Gad, tweeted Gad. that. Gad 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 loved reason. going to the basket. Yeah, In the Gad third quarter. Me. This is exactly what it was, except he hit about seven cars on the way there. He <laughs> every time. He, did he, not gave, he gave each of them a love bump. Bop, bop, bop. You guys remember his drive in like the second quarter? He like caught it on the move and he felt like he was moving too fast for himself, but he like collided into four people and kind of just, just <laughs> folded under the basket like his knees folded in the front of him. <laughs> I thought he got hurt. <laughs> I thought he got hurt too. Like, oh, you're moving way too fast. Relax. I was like, Hold great on. Orlando. Robinson. Old man, bro. The old man knees. Yo, him and Sabonis were just going at each other, and neither of them jumping. It was the funniest, yeah. like three minute hilarious. stretches, of just going. But Kevin Love was some freaking splashing. Like he splashed two of them. It was crazy. And Sabonis, bro, Sabonis even hit a three today. Like what the fuck? Yeah, what uh, what Cass said in the chat. Kevin Love picked Malik Monk off the floor. How my mom picks up my Yorkie. He <laughs> just grabbed that bitch by the arms. And just, here you go, buddy. <laughs> Funny. Monk is like 165 pounds. I bet it's skinny. He picked them up. You know, it wasn't even the armpits. It was like the like, like that area. <laughs> he was like grabbing a puppy. Area. He like grabbed them from the back. He's like, come here. Pick that man up by his tricep. Was I was like, like that's more disrespectful than running me over. <laughs> he had him on the back with it. Like he gave him a backpack. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, he little back. bros him. He he's like, he's him. like, I just dealt with Zion. This is nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's exactly how my mom picks up my four pound Yorkie, bro. Shit is hilarious. <laughs> it's so fucking funny, dude. Shout out to Jaime with, you know, room and time with the ball. Yes. Jaime, Jaime is him. Be- best leave. game in a while for Jaime. He, he needed that one. I mean, it's, you know, there's I mean, yeah, causation you know. correlation. I disagree with that. You guys were talking about that in the chat. I-, I-, I think that he had just been struggling. I think that teams had kind of sat on his pump fakes and he had to adjust and i i don't think that this is like he doesn't have jimmy or tyler in the lineup i think that he i think that he got a lot off cuts and he got a lot off movement and i think that they're just playing a little bit faster lately um yeah Yeah. i i I, i'm I'm pleased and he needed that because he had struggle and i think defensively he was as alive as he's been in a long time yeah 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 feel a little better a little more rest uh, and I, f- I feel like the hierarchy helped him today. The shot distribution, yes. he knew he was going to get there. Uh, and that's he, kind of what I mean, G. Yeah. Not necessarily that, like, yeah. other guys are kind of, like, in the way of things. But, like, you know, he knew he was it's not going to get yanked for no, you know, real reason. And even when it feels like he, he's been figured out, you know, there's not two, three other people ahead of him who needed the next possession. Like, there was space for him to kind of get it back. After to work, maybe to work through it. A little it. Bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what these games are for, though. That's what the regular yeah. listen tomorrow they're gonna play. You know, I'm sure that you know what I think is funny that they suspended Jimmy for the back to back, and I was like, well, they weren't. They were probably not even gonna play on both games anyway. <laughs> Jokes yeah. on you, Adam Silver. <laughs> um, yeah. you Waste get, of a suspension. <laughs> yeah, you get a fresh Jimmy, and they won too without him, which is huge. Um, Crazy it's a good game. team. I, I need Jaime to show out tomorrow against Joe Cronin. To tomorrow. Oh, I hope so. I hope. And, and I, hope package. I need, I, I need, I need I hope all those dudes take it personally. I hope Duncan takes it personally. I hope Tyler takes it personally. I hope Hawkins takes it personally. Nicola. I hope Tyler can, Tyler can take it. Tyler can take it off. Like, yeah. for real. Get, <laughs> get well. We yeah. we play him True. again. Don't worry. You got your chance yeah. to shine. I need a I need the, the school Henderson 4 for 17 shooting yeah. and then Jaime like 9 for 11, 9 for 12. Yeah. It's like, I didn't want to be here anyway, bitch, but like, look at yeah. what you, you know, <laughs> so what you it's new you didn't want, it's, right? It's it's funny how we're talking, like, they played the Kings, but we have to bring up Portland because they play them tomorrow. Portland had, like, they tweeted, like, 60% of their local viewership is down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the team hates that guy. Bro, the Hornets held them to 80 points the other day. <laughs> Like, say that, on, say that again for the people who the don't Hornets? know. The Charlotte the Hornets. Hornets. The Hornets. That's fucking despicable. Grant Williams is Hornets. <laughs> <laughs> he talked to me. has been hooping. I bet he's actually been playing good. No, Grant Williams. Williams. Yes. I just saw I, uh, Drew Starr on Twitter tweeted out, light the beam, and tweeted out a picture of a booby <laughs> trap. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Iconic. That's, that's for the South Florida local audience. 
Oh my god. Well, listen, this has been uh I listen, I survived. The heat survived and I survived the show. Uh thank you to my beautiful teammates who got me through another one when I wasn't feeling well. And we'll be back here tomorrow. We got Heat Blazers. It is the Joe Cronin Bowl. We Jimmy comes back. The Must villain of the NBA returns. I like hope Jimmy blue. like hits. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I, I need at least like two Dame times just for the. <laughs> Let's go, Lou. Light the beam, Lou. <laughs> Light the beam, Lou. Light the beam. Yo, hey, that bitch is bright though. Hold yeah, on, you can't even read it. You can't read it at nah, all. Bro. You can't read it anyways. I gotta stand no, no. right here next to this light so you can get. <laughs> I'm on. working, guys. Let's just let's just commissioner DM to me the funniest thing about light the beam with your sign. I I couldn't believe that <laughs> he said. <laughs> I'm weak. It looks like a dog. It looks like a dog being chased by a bike. It does. Or like a dog bone. There's something behind a dog. That first oh. part looks like a PlayStation controller. With oh my god, Bon! It looks like the dog from Monopoly. The little dog piece. Yes. From Monopoly. <laughs> oh, that so sign is iconic. <laughs> hey man, Name I want to say. Lou turned his head. He's trying to see it. <laughs> <laughs> It is bright, bro. <laughs> hey, man, I appreciate chat rocking with us. You know, we had like almost 200 people hey, in here. There you go. Fucking Monday night at, one, one, in at one in the morning. That's fucking, we, you know, never say that people don't love this team. We love you all for rocking with us. And we'll see you tomorrow. We got uh, the Cronin Bowl. And then we got you for Denver, Heat Denver Thursday. on Thursday. Final rematch. Rematch. rematch of the final. So we'll see you there. Shout out to y'all and uh, embrace your bounce. Deuces, guys.